we talked about two basic financial statements so far that is the p and l the profit or loss statement receipt and expenditure statement or income and expenditure statement etc whatever name you call it and then we talked about the balance sheet these two financial statements as such are mandatory for every organization that is basically registered out there for them to prepare at least once every year at the end of financial year so now we are going to talk about the third financial statement what i normally call it as or what we call it as basically the cash flow statement this cash flow statement or this statement the third statement what we are talking about is also mandatory but only for companies that are listed the companies that are listed it is mandatory whereas the other two statements are mandatory for every company that is registered the third statement becomes mandatory only for those companies basically which are listed listed in the sense listed as one of the exchanges in india so what we normally uh, do is normally all these three statements are looked at in tandem when we are looking at analysis of any company out there now why do you need a cash flow statement why do i sort of am i am very happy with the p and l statement itself why do i need to prepare a cash flow statement primary reason your p and l statement is purely on what we call it as accrual basis it does not give you the exact amount the profit might be there or the loss might be there it will never match with the amount of money the cash what you have either in your bank or your cash or whatever cash box or whatever it is it will be completely different imagine a situation where i have made all my purchase all my sales on credit and i have actually not paid your profit will be humongous but you will be what i call it as cash starved as far as the entity is concerned you have made all your purchases on credit i'm just giving you simple mundane example you made all your purchases on credit and none of the guys you are paying up whole process what happens you have a lot of cash left and doesn't mean that you got to be feeling very happy about it so what happens a company makes a lot of profit we will say oh made a profit i should be happy well you got to look at the other statements also is the profit translating to cash now i got a lot of cash now i need to know it's simple you could have borrowed money from a bank and there could be a lot of cash lying in your cash box out there and that need not be basically from your operations also so in the process what we do in drew is we try and look at what the third basic financial statement what we call it as a cash flow statement out there in a cash flow statement we look at couple of aspects we look at dissecting this cash flow statement i use the word dissecting because we are splitting that is a maybe that might be a better word to use for you guys so what we try and do is we split the entire cash flow statement into three basic parts now i want to see what is the kind of cash that comes in basically from my operations now i want to see the other cash cash that comes in from my operations when i say that's a slightly wrong word cash flow from the operations why because cash only need not come in from operations it can also go out you pay your salaries you make your purchases etc so we will say cash flow from operations it means both inflow as well as outflow out there now i go to the second statement second part of it what we look at we will say cash flow from what we call it as investing activities now the third basic aspect i'll explain each of this we call it as financing activities so what we look at is we look at the third basic aspect we said financing activity now let me give you some examples of all this now i say i pay dividends to my shareholders there is a cash outflow when you pay dividend agreed or not agreed now 
when there is a cash outflow because of a dividend activity, what is that? What does that pertain to? Does it pertain to operation, my investing or my financing? Why do you pay dividends? Why do you, why do you pay dividends? Because somebody has put in money in your company. What have they done to your company? They have financed your company. Please know what? Investing is when you invest. Please always think from your company, your point of view. Everybody said investing in operations. People conveniently left out financing. Right? Basically, what is happening? Somebody is financing. That is a source of fund. The capital that comes in is a source of fund for you. Am I with you on this? When capital is a source of fund, when I give them return, what is the act, a cash outflow? Cash outflow because of somebody has financed. I am repaying that fellow. I am paying, not, not repaying. I am paying some dividend out there. Even if I repay, it is the same. So, what is happening? Cash flow occurring because of what we typically call it as in this particular case the financing activity agreed i borrow money from the bank so what happens so think through it slightly that's all when i take money from the bank what is it in a source of fund it's a source of fund for me it's somebody's financing maybe a debt maybe debenture so it's a cash inflow that is money coming into me because i'm borrowing money from the bank money coming to the company when money is coming to the company, money is coming in because of what activity, financing activity. So, what is happening? There is a cash inflow occurring because of a financing activity. With you on this? So, similarly, let us look at, I receive dividends. Beautiful. Okay. Now, what happens? Because you have invested money somewhere, that is where you are receiving dividends. Please note, dividends paid, dividends received. There is a subtle difference there. So, in this whole process, what am I trying to do? I am looking at, I pay invested money, I am getting some return. So, what is happening? I am getting money because of my investing activity out here. So, in the whole process, what we are trying to do? Every aspect of cash flow that happens, we are trying to trace it back to one of these three aspects. I pay sitting fees for my board of directors purely your operations because for the core activity normally it is basically for the core activity out there so you are looking at as as cash outflow from an, for an operating activity i pay wages i pay salaries etc all cash outflow because of an operating activity out there so what we are trying to do is we are trying to classify all the money that is either going out of the company or coming into the company into these three buckets. Nothing, no rocket science, it is very, very simple. Any money, but only thing is you got to determine what is the money that is going out of the company and what is the money that is coming into the company. The sheet of paper what he has given out there, that is just an example which we will try and see if we can solve it. Just do not read the entire thing, just read the first aspect out here. Give me a copy. Thank you. Just read the first aspect out there, just the first line sales 30,650. That is all. You can keep the paper down, no worry. You can just leave the paper down. 30,650 is a sale. So, what is the cash inflow or a cash outflow? What happens? Are you sure? Sales is an outflow? Ca cash. Well, I am talking about cash, okay, cash inflow. How many of you are sure that it is an inflow? Entire 30,650. No. How do you know that it is all cash sales? Where is it mentioned it is cash sales? Maybe all are credit sales, maybe all are still due. Am I with you? So, what you are trying to do is when we look at a cash flow statement, when we are sort of arriving at a cash flow statement, we take the P and L and the balance sheet. If it is due, then what should it be? it should be lying on the debtor side of the balance sheet, obviously. Now, in this particular case, now pick up that paper. You see there is a sale and just read the debtor's column in what is called as a balance sheet out there. In the same sheet, it is all in the same uh, side of the sheet. Just read the debtor's column in the balance sheet out there. 1700, that is for the current year. Then there is something for the previous year. So, how do we do it? What is the actual? Now tell me what is the cash you would have received? Second aspect. Now hold it for a minute. Hold it for a minute. 
the second aspect out here no second aspect out here unlike in a p and l let me again restress unlike in a p and l we do not worry about to which year this particular cash inflow or outflow pertains to we are not worried about it you might be receiving some money for a sale which occurred 10 years back will you record it in the p and l this year no you will never because the sale has taken place 10 years back you have recorded whereas in a cash flow what are you worried about you are not worried about to which year what purpose you are worried about money coming into your cash box and getting out of your cash box that's all so in this particular case what do you see you see that there are some amount due at the end of last year there is a particular quantity of sales that has taken place this year there is some amount due at the end of this year normally the amount due at the end of this year for example in this let us take this example itself what is the amount due at the end of this year debtors current year 1700 okay beautiful now there is what is the old debtors out there how much was it due last year One thousand two hundred. Now, supposing you had received this one thousand two hundred during that particular year, perfect. You that is a cash inflow. Will that get recorded anywhere in the P and L? Supposing you had not received that money this year, the last year, then what would happen? Would it just get out of your balance sheet? What will happen? it will still show so this 1700 what is there as far as the current year is concerned what you have talked about could possibly include if you have not received or that could be pertaining to the entire current sale of this particular year also if you have not received it obviously because please note when you talk about a balance sheet it is what is due as of today somebody can argue sir i have written it off fine not a problem then this 17 and they uh, is there anywhere as it mentioned that old dues were written off if old dues were written off then fine we will take care of it there is nowhere it is mentioned the old dues were written off so as of now what happens if the you don't receive the money in a balance sheet what does it talk about it talks about what is due at that point of time when you basically drop your balance sheet if you have received it it's not due if you have not received it is still due as of today last year also it was due this year also it can be due next year also it could be due if you have not received it it can keep getting carried forward now from the balance sheet will i make out whether it is what is called as uh, it is this year's due or last year's due etc well this is a consolidated part you may not make out if you look at the annual report you will make out to a certain extent that is they will always divide it into due more than 6 months due less than 6 months If you go into the detail, then you can sort of get. If we go into the schedules and other things, so let us not worry about that aspect as of now. So what happens if we have received it? You would have got it. If you have not received, it would actually be there. So what is the total cash you would have received from customers this year? What is the sale? Let us take the sale also. Let us take the sale figure, sir. Sale figure. What is the sale man? Minus five hundred. Agreed. Simple. Ideally, let us look at it like a plain slate. This is the sale that has happened. Thirty thousand six fifty is the sale that has happened out there. I must have received this money. Thirty thousand six fifty is the sale that has taken place this year. This year, ideally, you are eligible to get the entire money on sale. Ideally, plus you need to get the money what was due last year also. Maybe you, I mean, what is the due? What is the total money you are eligible to get? Your total money you are eligible to get is the sale that has happened this year plus the money that was already due as far as the balance sheet is concerned. So that will make it thirty one thousand eight hundred and fifty. Out of thirty one thousand eight hundred and fifty, still about seventeen hundred is still due. So how much money you would have ideally got thirty one thousand seven fifty minus whatever is at seven hundred is basically the money that you have received from operations out there. We are not worried about. This twelve hundred pertains to last year, sir. Should we take it? Cash flow. What are you worried about? Money coming in, money going out. What are we worried about? Salary. That is every month on thirty first, we will just see you look our account and say what is the money that is coming in. Whether it is arrears or not arrears, we don't care about it, right? If the money is good, then we are happy. So something cash inflow, cash outflow. That's all. And what happens in this particular period? To which year it pertains to? We don't worry. 
between a set date that is also cash flow statement is also for a set period out there either for the year for a month for now unlike a balance sheet unlike a balance sheet unlike a balance sheet like a similar to pnl it is for a set time period it is for a set time period out there yes mr krishna 1700 is it the debtors only for this year is it anywhere mentioned 1700 is due as on that day that means it could as on this day it could include from this year it is due so from which year it is due no no idea that can be further split for example part of it belongs to this year part of it last year part of it year before last etc etc but as of today what is the due 1700 is due as of today how much are you eligible to get the entire sale value plus basically now now what happens in this particular case what we see out here on this day what are you eligible to get what i am eligible to get is the sale of this year i am eligible to get i am liable to get it plus whatever was due in the last year i am eligible to get it am i with you on this so what have i actually got this is the total money i am eligible to get less what is still due is what i would have ideally got received in the form of cash out there that is all what i do so what happens this that is 30650 plus your uh, 1700 minus your 1200 or whatever that is the no sorry it is other way around it is just the other way around out there that is plus your 1200 is what you are eligible to get minus 1700 which you have not received basically that is the total money you are actually received because of what activity what activity Operation. operations <laughs> cash flow we will take only these three terms nothing else because of an operating activity cash inflow occurring because of an operating activity am i with you on this i am going to give you a minute can you calculate what is the cash outflow as far as cost of goods sold concerned it's a only cost of goods sold is concerned cog is the next item on the uh, statement out there only on cost of goods sold what is the cash outflow cash of, cost of goods sold is cash cash outflow right because your purchases and uh, salaries and everything so what is the amount of cash outflow that would have happened can you just calculate and tell me it says 26000 you just calculate cogs okay for a minute here one second guys cogs cogs is nothing but cost of goods sold cost of goods sold is the total cost of your manufacturing etc till the point of sale barring your administration that is all your direct manufacturing cost indirect manufacturing cost everything put together that is the cost of the good which is ready for sale no for, because it's very clear what do you, uh, what is operation what is see in that idea in that aspect out there what are related to financing is financing right that is what i have been talking about so for example dividend payable are paid financing dividend received investing so it's 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 very simple out there you have borrowed money from a bank to purchase a machinery so what have they done no that but still what have they done they have financed your research whether you have, to which asset it pertains to it's it's not a issue they have financed your business for example when you you can raise capital in two ways equity debt when i borrow money from a bank to set up my factory what are they doing they are financing my business out there when what happens when he did a sale what did we do sale means there is a basically you have sold goods you are liable to get the money and the guys from which you are not you have not got the money they are all in the form of debtors out there what does cogs include cost of goods sold cost of goods sold basically is all the purchases of your materials that you have basically materials you have purchased plus all other expenditure that relates to your manufacturing till the point of sale out there so it includes obviously your purchases whatever you have made of your raw materials your wages and salaries basically what you pay your power fuel lighting and other expenditure related to your manufacturing let's keep it for manufacturing as of now now in this particular case it says my cost of goods sold is basically 26000 right quota of goods sold is material utilized please understand this is from the pnl when it is from the pnl it says it is the material that is utilized for the quantum of sale that has basically happened or for production this particular year during that time period out there you know, that means material utilized you might have bought material you might have sold material whatever it is you when you have bought material you could either buy in cash or buy on credit out there 
Now imagine I have made all the purchases on credit or imagine I have made all the purchases on cash and there is no stock out there, no opening stock, no closing inventory, no creditors, opening creditors, no closing creditors out there. Then what happens? What is your cash outflow? Your cash outflow will be exactly equal to 26,000 rupees what it is there. Let us take one aspect at a time. Now, that is the amount that you are, you are liable to pay. But God damn it, there is always creditor sitting out there. That is the fellows from whom you have been buying goods on credit. Last year, if you look at, there were some amount of creditors out there. There are some opening creditors out there. Your opening creditors are to the extent of about 18, 90. You got to pay those fellows also this year. That is your total liable payment. That is, I will say, opening creditors is 18, 90. Now, this is the amount you are liable to pay. Am I with you or not? You are liable to pay. Am I with you or not as of now? Yes. But still, there is some closing creditors also of about 150 dollars, that is 150 rupees, that is basically due out there. That is, you have not paid for those fellows. So, basically, there is a closing creditors of about 150. That means, ideally, what you should have paid will basically be what you call it as. Am I right with the total? Okay. Now, this is ideally, this is the amount what you should have paid. So, what have we tried to do? This is ideally the money that you should have paid out there. Am I with you on this? So far, so clear. Any doubts on this? 1890 can include that 150, need not include that 150. I do not know. Maybe what you are saying, Mr. Srinivasan, is right because it might include this uh, 1890 is 150. This Sorry, this is opening. And this is closing. This 150 out here closing might not be pertaining to this year's sale at all, might be pertaining to your opening creditors itself. Last year's creditors, somebody has not paid still. Maybe the so much. It may not even pertain to this year's sale. This year's sale, imagine, is all cash sale. That 150 which is due might be a legacy which you are carrying forward in one from 1890, etc. Possible. Now, how sure are you is that? that entire 26,000 rupees worth of cost of goods that you have sold, he is bought only this year. That is why I said wait. Uh -huh. Now, might not be bought this year. You might have lie this entire 26,000 rupees worth of goods might be have been lying in inventory which you would have bought last year and you would have used it possible or not. If that is possible, then is there a cash outflow that is occurring because of the purchase this year? There is no cash outflow that is occurring because of the purchase this year. Am I with you or not? So, out of this 26,000, how much of the goods I have used it from what was there in the last year? That you will see what is the opening inventory out there. What is the opening inventory? So, this 27,740 is what you are should have ideally paid. But out of the 27,740, 1950 worth of inventory we have used it from the last year that was there in the godown already. You have not made any new purchase. So, should uh, so ideally what I should do, I will be able, I should basically be what is called as reducing that amount out here. Am I with you so far? So good? Some confusion? Yes? Sure, sir. 100 percent? Okay, fine. Again, I repeat for the benefit. What did we look at in this particular case so far? We said instead of COGS, as of now, keep it as what is called as purchases. Simple, keep it as purchases. That will be a little more simpler for you. Purchases of raw material. You have purchased that is or in the, in the or purchases of raw materials or whatever raw materials utilized used you can actually keep it that way whatever in the PNL. Raw material utilized is 26,000 in the PNL. If you want you mark it that way. 26,000 dollars is the kind of raw material that is utilized this particular year as far as PNL is concerned. 
Now, ideally, is the cash outflow equal to 26,000? No, because there is some money still due this year. There is someone, there was some money which was also due last year. So, we found out what are the money that you are liable to pay as of that particular year, it was 27,740. Now, out of this 26,000 dollars of material that you have utilized, out of this 26,000 dollars of material that you have utilized out there, 1950 dollars of material is you have used it from already the stock which is there in the go down. So, you have not made that any purchase in that case. So, what do I do? I reduce that basically to account for what is the money that I am liable to pay on the purchases that I have made this particular year. Am I with you or not? So far so clear, but you also see some goods still in the inventory at the end of this year also some more raw material. That means, you have not only bought for 26,000, you have bought additional material which is also lying in the what you call it as go down this particular year as of now. So, what is the additional material that is what we normally call it as closing inventory is about 900 is basically the amount out there and that will give me something around 26,690 is basically the kind of number what we have. So, what did I do out here? First, I looked at the creditors alone, do not confuse both. Sir, you are accounting for creditors, you are also accounting for inventory. No, these two are separate, creditors are where on the liability side of the balance sheet, separate. Inventory is where on the asset side of the balance sheet, separate, do not mix both. It is something like, sir, when you take a loan from a bank, what happens? Your cash also increases, your liability also increases, yes or no? Yes. yes. Otherwise, what you initially first class, what are the confusion? No, that is the cash what I have is a loan, cash what I have is a loan, that is the kind of argument what I had. I said if the cash gets stolen, who is liable, bank is liable or you are liable? You are liable because you own it, similar, one second, Swapnika. So, what happens? In this particular case, treat both independent, treat both independent out there. First, what we look at? As of creditors, what is the money? Second, what we looked at? The amount of material that you have utilized, the number of units, you can even convert it to units and see that. So, what have I done? I have there are some inventory which was opening, I have used it. There are some additional inventory which was left, basically it will not, the inventory which is left will never appear in the p &L statement because p &L statement will take only material which is utilized as of this particular year. So, what happens? I have reduced that part of it, added the material that is basically uh, what do you call it as which was uh, which is in the inventory at the end of the year and basically have arrived at what we call it as. 26,690 is the amount of cash outflow that has occurred because of an operating activity.